Hi guys, this is a video that I should have made a year ago um, to tell you guys the truth on what happened with Loli and Aldo, but I didn't um, because I wanted to go the legal route and settle this in court um, amicably out of the public, um, like a professional. But it's unfortunate, um, you know, that Aldo had to go ahead and make a 10 minute video of stupidity and then Loli had to repost it. So um, Loli posted his video and said bits and pieces of what's been happening. A year ago, we chose the truth. It costed a lot, a battle indeed, but we stand on the side of truth and the truth always prevails and how we sleep at night, hoping this helps save some. So if you guys have been following me and Laura Lee and Aldo for a while, um, well, you guys didn't know Aldo until last year um, when Laura Lee started dating him, but I'm sure you've been following you know, us and they have both been trying to disparage me and trying to hurt me and um, keep posting They've both been posting stupidity about me for over a year now, and I have not posted one thing. Um, you know, I let him, you know, keep doing this because I wanted to settle in court, but th it's time to make this video. Um, it's going to be a long one, and uh, please bear with me because it's it's long and it's deep and it's sad, but it's it's it should be in a movie of how how crazy this is and the shit that I had to deal with. Actually, the shit that Laurel had to deal with too. Um, she's not innocent in this situation. You're, you're going to see, um, you know, as we go forward, but I, I ask you bear with me because it is a long one. Um, I know Laura Lee since 2016. Um, I was at her first competition, um, the Mike Clement, where she won the overall and, you know, I've known Laura Lee for almost six years now. Um, there's, there's parts of, first of all, there's parts of the story. Um, that may see, seem irrelevant, but they are relevant um, later on in the story. So that's why I'm including them now. Um, and also I want to mention, um, you know, this is a video that my dear friend Sean Roden wanted me to make to make before um, he passed away. I didn't do it. Um, and he would be so happy that this truth is coming out. Um, I know this because he told me, you know, well, Sean is not one to kind of really defend himself or just kind of kind of just always believe that karma would take its place. Um, I kind of settle things. So this is, this is part of Sean Rogan's karma. Um, you know, and this is something that he deserves to be out in the truth. And, you know, I, I, I really miss Sean. I really love Sean. And, um, you know, this is part, this is partly for you. Um, I know her at least since 2016, uh, for six years. Um, and she dated an abusive boyfriend, um, before she dated Sean Roden, whose name was Max. She, she met everyone that close to her knows, um, you know, he was a drug addict, very abusive, never let um, her talk to any guy, block everyone, like just cr like really bad. And Lily was with him for five years. She finally got the courage to leave him and um, she met Sean and she started dating Sean Roden. Um, you guys know that Lily made a video, um, you know, after her and Sean broke up. She's saying that, you know, Sean cheated on me and I'm devastated and this and this. And whether Sean did or didn't, um, Laura Lee is not innocent in this situation. She cheated on Sean Roden for the first year and a half of their relationship with her ex-boyfriend, the abusive one. Um, and Sean was always calling me and messaging me and telling me that, like, he goes to bed crying every night. And he, Sean loved Laura Lee with his entire being. And he, he found text messages of them talking and, you know, for a year and a half. And he had sent it to someone who spoke French and to translate. And she says, I still love you. I miss you. And she went back to Canada to see him. And Sean knew about all this. And he confronted her and she promised to stop. And a year and a half later, she did. So she mentioned Sean cheated on her, but she did the same thing for the first year and a half of the relationship. Um, so when they broke up um, this, after this incident with Sean Roden, um, one of our mutual friends let her stay in his house for free for as long as she wanted in Vegas. The nicest guy ever, a lot of you guys know him. I'm not gonna mention his name. Um, I don't wanna get involved in the situation, but he's a mutual friend and he let Laura Lee stay in his house as long as she wanted for free with no strings attached, no money, nothing. Just as a friend, he's so nice. Just just to finish her Olympia prep, kind of give her a place to go because Laura didn't have a place to go. Um, so he let her, stay in his, let her stay in his house for as long as she wanted. About a month in, um, he was at work and Lorley had met Aldo at a gym, right, where they trained for four hours. He tra Aldo trained Lorley for four hours that day, just, you know, like, it's two weeks after the show. As a bodybuilder, you guys know you would never train for, train for an hour max, right? 
anyway, so she brought while our mutual friend was at um, at work, she brought Aldo, her new friend, over to this man's house, who she's staying in for free, and slept with Aldo the first day she met him. And Aldo used this guy's soap, his towels, his all his personal shit, his shaving cream, um, left a disaster in the kitchen, tore up his entire house. Right, so. The guy comes home and he's like, what the fuck? Like, imagine you let a girl stay in your house for free, right? And she brings a random guy over that you don't know in your house, sleeps with him, right? In one of your beds. And then he uses all of your personal shit. This is the type of person Laurel is. And you're going to, guys going to realize this later on in the story. There's no sense of respect for anyone's stuff. Um, she's extremely entitled. Everyone owes her everything. And you're going to kind of understand this as we go into the story. And I, I, this is this is a really disheartening um, video and, you know, truth of the situation because a lot of you guys look up to her and um, it's not what you guys see. It's social media and it's just, it's a fake reality of the persona that she tries to portray online. And same with Aldo too, you know. I think a lot of you guys can tell he's a douchebag, um, you know, and he's abusive, but it's sort of this I'm going to show you. But, I mean, you could probably already tell that, but he doesn't hide it well. But Laurely hides... Um, her real personality extremely well. And a lot of you guys watching this video already know the real Lorley. You know, I'm sure there's probably at least a hundred of you that know Lorley and messaged me like, I can't believe her. And, um, you know, she's, she's done a lot of things to a lot of people. Um, anyway, so, um, she was, um, telling me and our mutual friend, everyone that she's scared of Sean and that he's, um, you know, stalking her and that he's, you know, like, like he's trying to like escape him. Right. But then, Sean and his friend Stan, who's living with him, um, sending his message saying, Lorley just came over and like slept with Sean. Like, why is she um, saying that she's scared, that he's abused? Like, just like complete lying. And then um, she kept telling me the stalking thing. So I called Sean, like, Sean, what's up? He's like, dude, she stole my car for three, she stole Sean's car for three days while she's telling everyone he's stalking her to bring Aldo around to different hotels to sleep with him, right? And then, um, Sean just wanted his car back. So what did she do after three days of just Telling everyone he's stalking me, I don't know why. She's, while she stole, while she stole his car, she left in the gym parking lot overnight with the car in, with the key ignition and let the car die out. And then told Sean the next morning, "Oh, by the way, your car is in the parking lot." Like that's um, <clears throat> that was a reality of that situation. Um, she stole Sean's credit card, um, and she was buying stuff for Aldo and herself and spending thousands of dollars for stuff both of them. When she told me, she was bragging about like, "I don't care, I stole his credit card. What the fuck? Uh, I don't give a shit. He just he deserves this." Um, which took to Chicago Pro, which we, which was two weeks after um, this incident, and buying stuff for Aldo and Sean let her fucking do it. Um, <clears throat> and um, Sean had mentioned, so Laurelie and Sean got married, and Laurelie needed this so that she was able to um, stay in the United States and live there to continue to compete um, and build, you know, her brand there or whatever. Um, and he told her, "Listen." Um, Stop posting this Aldo guy on social media. We're married, right? And, um, you know, it's going to cause legal problems for Sean Roden if if we're married legally and you're posting that you're with another guy on social media. Sean could get in trouble and go to jail himself, right? So he's like, stop this bullshit or I'm going to annul the marriage. I don't want to be part of this. I don't want to go to jail. I already have problems. I don't want to deal with this, right? So um, Laura Lee just kind of ignore that. So um, Aldo leaves to go back to um, to Miami. And four days after he leaves, Laurely FaceTimes me and our mutual friend while she was still at his house. Well, he, I was FaceTimed, but she was with our mutual friend at his house. And she goes, guys, I want to talk to you. You know, um, this Aldo guy, I met him and I, you know, I like him, but he seems a little bit crazy. He reminds me a lot of my ex-boyfriend, Max, the abusive one. Um, but I like him. Um, he wants me, he says he wants me to move to Miami and marry me. Okay. This is four days after they met. And I'm just like, Laurely, what are you doing? Like you have, you're married right now with Sean, right? Um, your Olympia's in two months. Like, just stay put. And the, our mutual friend was like, Lorley, absolutely do not do that. There's already enough problems. Like, don't make even more of a disaster in the situation. She's like, oh, you guys are right. You guys, I respect you both. You're both smart. Let's, I'm just going to stay here and just focus my Olympia prep. Eight hours later, she's on a flight to Miami. And just completely ignored us. And then I messed her with mutual friend. I'm like, hey, have you seen Lorley? Um, she sent me a check-in from a different location. He's like, no, she left. So she, she was with our mutual friend for a month at this house for free. And then randomly one night, she just leaves, takes all her shit, doesn't even say thank you, nothing, just leaves and just goes on her way and just, just because she's extremely entitled, um, thinks that everything should be given to her for free. 
Um, so when Sean and Lori were together, he paid everything for it. He paid rent. He paid ten thousand dollars for Charles Glass's assistant. Remember the personal trainer that she had in the twenty nineteen Olympia uh, to train her. He paid food. He paid. He told me he paid flights all the time. He paid. He Lori lived off Sean Roden. This is why Lori can't be alone and live on her own because she's not capable of being with on herself and um, you know building life on her own. She always needs to be attached to a guy to be able to support her and stuff too. Even though she makes decent money with sponsorships, a lot of girls are looking up to her. Um, you know, this is the type of situation that you're admiring. There's, there's a lot more that goes into this one second. So, um, he paid everything for, for three years, right? When they broke up, she sent him an invoice for $15 of a snack. She bought his daughter, Cora, who says she loves, right? And told, told him he wants, she wants a refund. He called me crying. He's like, James, you won't believe what just happened. He, he, she sent an invoice to his fucking, to Sean Roden of a snack she bought his fucking daughter okay and then when um you know sean passed away she's like oh it's so sad for cora and this and it's like it's fucking disgusting that you imagine you're with a guy for three years he's for all your shit and then you send an invoice for 15 dollars of a snack you bought his daughter a month prior it's it's insane plus um you know lorley was telling me and our mutual friend everyone that they have a mutual bank account and sean is using the money and this and this sean said they have a mutual bank account to help laura lee She's never put a dollar in his joint bank account and he was using it to pay for the rent and helping her give her money to help her do whatever she wanted, putting money in joint bank account. Um, Laura Lee always had credit card debt since I've known her. Um, you know, the, the way she, this is another thing where it's like, you guys are looking up to her and stuff too. Um, she mentioned to me a couple years ago, she had credit card debt and, um, you know, the bank was calling her for a month and telling her, you know, you gotta pay his debt. You gotta pay his debt. What, what did she do to resolve the situation? She blocks the bank's number. This is how she deals with things in her life. She just kind of like, no, I don't want to deal with it. No, that's it. That's it. It's, this, this, is, this, is what, this is what you guys are looking up to, right? I want to help her in a situation. Um, you know, I'm like, Lord, this is, you can't live like this. You're, you're fucking yourself. You're fucking your credit. You can't just block a bank. So I made, I made the Glutes, Glutology Laura Lee ebook, right? The, the one you guys are still buying it today and the one you still advertise that you guys are buying, I made that. Um, I bought, I uh, paid the graphic designer. I paid the person to fucking make the whole PDF exercise selection, all of this stuff. I spent a long time making that and she's still selling it. Okay. She told me she made $40,000 in the first two months, USD and paid off all the credit card debt and then had like uh, $10,000 left over from the ebook that I made her. And I told her, I didn't want a dollar. I didn't want nothing from this. This was a gift for me to her to try to help her get in a better life situation. This is just one of the many things I've done for Lorley. Um, <laughs> this, this gets, this gets crazy. So she, for three years, um, and I've been morally, she always would try to use in situations and I always kind of, I felt bad for her and I kind of just let her do it. Um, she went to, you know, um, hairstylist in Beverly Hills and was like, James, um, can you please, you know, uh, I, I pay for hair extensions, but I, I, I got hair extensions, but I don't have my credit card. Can you please pay the guy and I'll pay you back? Sure. $800. Okay, Canadian for this for this fucking hair extensions. Oh, James, uh, I missed my flight for Pittsburgh. Can you pay the thousand dollars now? Okay. Oh, James, I forgot my credit card here. Can you please pay for fifty thousand dollars for two and a half years? I've been coaching. She's been fucking doing this to me, never paying back one dollar. Okay. We brought our photographer to, to a show. I think it was like a, we were supposed. To, I said let's split it 50 dollars 500 dollars each. Oh, sure, no problem. Okay, let's do that. We get there. The photographer finishes. Okay, uh, I need my payment. She's like, James, can you? Can you cover my part and I'll pay you back? I just pay the thousand. Well, sure, whatever. So then fifty thousand dollars worth, guys, of this fucking bullshit of expense I've incurred. All the all the photo shoots and all the shit you see on social media while I was coaching is all my I paid for all of that. Okay, never got a dollar back. Um Laura Lee, within two weeks of her leaving to Miami, I think it was Chicago Pro right after that. She broke up with Alba four times in that two weeks. I said, I'm leaving. This guy's fucked up. I don't want to just like, and the guy, our mutual friend was like, come back to Vegas. Anytime you want, please come. I'm here to support you. Like she was telling everyone, this guy's crazy. I'm leaving, whatever. For some reason she, um, she didn't, she would break up with him a day and be like, okay, we're going to work on it. And we're, we're all like, Orly, you've been with this guy for two weeks. Like he's already showing shines of like abusive. He's already kind of like being mean to you. Like, like what do you, this is like the light stuff, right? That, that he was doing, um, initially. We're just like it, two weeks in, you're supposed to be like lovebirds, right? It's not supposed to be fucking breaking up four times it's crazy. So, you know, he comes to Chicago Pro, um, and I had an athlete there as well. And 
you know, I guys remember the Chicago Pro, the whole glute wagon thing, and you know, it was crazy. Laura Lee had great shape, and it was wonderful. And he ruined the whole weekend for Laura Lee um, and me, frankly. But we're at dinner, um, makes a fucking scene saying, like, this is two weeks they're dating. Makes a scene saying, oh, you only care about yourself. We all want to do stuff small. You want to just focus on this bodybuilding bullshit. Um, like, they're fucking yelling at each other in the restaurant at Cheesecake Factory, yelling at the waiter, throws a steak down at the waiter. Like, and then he goes to the bathroom, and my client that was with us was like, Laura Lee, like, how long have you known this guy? Like, she's like, two weeks. She's like, I hope you're not staying with him. She's like, no. He's like, okay. She's like, guys, I'm so sorry. I just ruined the night. I'm done with him after I leave here. I'm fucking done. She went back to the hotel in her own Uber, and, and Aldo went back in his own Uber, too. Like, they were, she was like, I'm done. Obviously, you know, that didn't end there. Two weeks later, um, or two or three weeks later, we have um, Tampa Pro, right? Um, we get to the hotel, and again, oh, James, I, I forgot my... I uh, forgot my credit card. Can you pay for the room? And I'm looking at Aldo. I'm like, you're the, like looking at him like, you're the boyfriend. Wouldn't you take it? He walks away, right? Because he doesn't want to deal with that um, you know, payment. So, all right, Laura Lee, take my credit card from the room. She's like, I'll pay you back. I promise. I'm going to expense it and I'll, they'll refund you, right? She was with HD Muscle. She tried to expense the hotel. Put my car in the room. Aldo goes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner on my car the whole fucking week in Tampa. They never pay me back. What Laura Lee was doing, was doing is she would expense her hotels with her sponsor that I was fucking paying for and then keep both of the money. Keep, keep both of the money, right? And I was just like, that's what she scams everyone um, in that way. So I'm like, this is, I was fucking pissed at that point. I'm like, and like, even him, like, they're both, they're both like so entitled. Like, if you knew someone had your credit card in your room, would you go to breakfast, lunch, dinner, and order room service and shit and not like pay for it? Like, like are you a man? Is that, is that how you, you, you know, like you're fucking, um, <laughs> you deal with things? And then like, even for, for gear and stuff too, like, Laura Lee would like order stuff and she's like, oh, he got me this, but he, he made me, he made me pay for it. Like, what the fuck? Like, you're supposed to be dating. Like, you give your girlfriend stuff. He made her pay for everything. She would get like, he would get her a coffee and be like, you owe me three bucks. Like, all the fucking time. And she sent me all this. Like, you guys that know them both know this situation. He's extremely fucking cheap with her. Um, don't worry, this story gets 10 times crazier. Um, so, where are we at here? Um, we're at the... Um, She's telling, you know, they broke up, this is over four weeks in now, she, they broke up already like eight, eight to nine times. Um, you know, she always ends up going to the Hermes Law Therapist's house in Miami. Um, and then she would go back. Well, one day she was like, okay, I'm leaving, telling, telling her friends, her family, um, you know, her her mom and her brothers and her best friend Z, we'll get into Z later, we're always telling him like, this guy reminds him, just like Max, he's exactly Max. She's like, she, I think she likes being in these abusive relationships, which is sad. And I actually... Um, have empathy towards her for this, you know, because this is maybe something that she can't control. But she told me he, I just, I crave Aldo because he's so much like Max. Like she never got over her first boyfriend that was abusive, and Aldo is exactly him, even a worse version of him. So she just like, she just loves to um, be intertwined with a situation that causes her stress and anxiety, and it's actually fucking sad. It's I, I actually feel bad for her, um, you know, because I don't think she tried to do this for herself, but she just this is the type of situation where she. She loves, she just like needs to be in, in her life to feel like complete. Like, um, so we go to the Michigan show. Um, and this is where I start seeing really fucking bad shit. Um, Aldo was telling Laura Lee that Sean's a rapist N word multiple times, calling him an N word. Um, trying to convince that Laurel that Sean actually raped that girl, which, you know, I don't think he did. And Laura Lee never, never thought that he did. And just tried, she was like, he just wanted her to hate Sean so much. They kept just repeating, he's a rapist N-word. He's a rapist N-word. He's a rapist N-word. Like, just to get into her head. And Lorley is very easily manipulated and very easily, um, uh, like, Lorley, like, she would talk to her mom and her best friend for, like, two or three hours. And, like, they can tell her something that she'll believe and that's the truth and that's in, in to help her, right? And she'll go to a hairdresser and talk to someone she never met five minutes. And th th they would be able to completely convince her of the opposite within a five-minute conversation of what her parents and her best friend. Um, told her that's how easy Laura Lee is manipulated. Um, Aldo, we had a three week phone conversation um, with Aldo, and she this was a really this is a big turning point because I had no problems with Aldo at this point. I knew they were breaking up, but I don't want to deal with this shit, so I kind of just let it slide. But he oh, we had a three week phone conversation. I don't know if they called me, they wanted me to like mediate some argument they had for some fucking reason. And he said, Laura Lee, you're gonna have no more friends after this. I'm going to be the last man saying though. That's a quote. Those were the words he said. And, um, you know, he says, I don't want to talk to your parents anymore about your personal life, your finances, your business. I am the man in your life. I have, you know, um, you know, your best interests at heart and 
I'm the only one in your life that does. Everyone else is against you, right? And then I talked to Lorley after. I'm like, Lorley, Lorley, by the way, has fucking fantastic parents. I don't know how she ended up this way because her brothers and her parents are amazing. And like, I'm like, Lorley, your mom loves you so much. Your mom is never going to try to misguide you, right? Like, never let a guy fucking tell you not to talk to your mom. It's fucking insane. And then you guys might remember her best friend, Z. Um, you know, came to Oliver Olympia as a little short girl with black hair. This girl is the nicest girl I've ever any I've told Lorley countless times how lucky she was to have Z in her life. Um, this girl was there for uh, FaceTime Lorley every night. This girl hated Aldo, right? Because imagine your best friend is calling you every night, telling you he's abusive, he's calling your names, he's hitting you, and you're leaving and all this shit, right? It's just like obviously you're gonna hate him, right? If your best friend's telling you this all the time. So um Aldo obviously hated her because she's like, Well, leave this fucking piece of shit, right? Just go on your own. I actually offered, I told Lorley, Lorley, I'm going to give you $7,000 to stay a month. Go get in a fucking apartment. Go live on your own folks on your prep. I don't care. So I was her friend. I was like, I don't want you to be forced to the situation. I don't know if you're having money problems, right? Just I'll give me, give you $7,000 a month, right? To just live on your own and just fucking not have to be in an abusive relationship. And then he posts on social media like, you know, a couple months ago, James tried to pay Lorley to break up with me. No, you fucking idiot. I tried to pay her to not be in a situation to be abused. If she's stuck, she's not able to go back to Canada to see her parents, right? Because she's stuck in the United States. Um, and she cannot leave, right? So I was trying to help her stay in a fucking apartment because she's my friend for six years to not be abused by this fucking asshole, right? Um, so anyways, her best friend, Z, right? Since a childhood best friend, um, she hated Aldo. And you guys are going to realize that she, she hasn't posted about her um, in over a year. And if you guys been, if you guys are a long-time worldly follower, always posted about, you know, FaceTiming Z. And Z came to all of her fucking shows. And her, she went to Tampa Pro with her in 2018, all of her Olympias. She's her sister, her sister for life. I love, like, I don't know if you guys, long, long time Laura Lee followers, you guys know who Z is. Um, Z actually went to Miami to celebrate her own birthday in November of last year. And um, she got into an argument with fucking Aldo because they're at a restaurant. And Aldo told her, Z, you're a waitress. You're below us, below us and you're scum. You shouldn't even be talking to us. Like, Aldo said that because she's a waitress that she shouldn't even be talking to us because she's beneath them. So Z slapped him in the fucking face, and Lorley kind of just like was like, "Well, like she didn't want to take sides, because um, I, I know she would have took Z aside. Aldo would probably would have fucking went ape shit on her." Um, so anyway, so Z went home, and she's like, "And Lorley's like, don't worry, I'm gonna break up with him." Anyways, the day after Z gets home, she gets a long text message from Lorley, and Lorley's like, um, "I'm moving you from my life. I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm basically moving forward." Aldo succeeded. He got Lorley. To no longer talk to her best friend anymore, her childhood best friend that she's known for fucking ever. Her the girl that's been for her that has been there for her since the beginning, talked to her every night. Aldo succeeded and he was able to convince Lorley to block her and they have not spoken since. Z, I still talk to her here and there. Um I'm not super close, but I've known her a long time and you know, say hi here and there, but I've seen her. But um it's so fucking sad. And she called me after this happened and she told me she could not believe she never thought that a guy would be able to get between both of them. Imagine you're like friends for 15 years and a guy that you're dating for four months is able to convince you to no longer be friends with your best friend. She couldn't believe that it was a reality because this was like the person she confided in, the person she was there for, the person she was FaceTiming every night at three o'clock in the fucking morning dealing with fucking elbow shit and then Lorley just cuts her off and be like, nah, get the fuck out of my life. Um, so anyways, um, that was in November. Um, going back a little bit, um, we go to the um, – Sean – Right, he's like, you know what? I'm annulling the marriage because she's staying in Miami. She never came back, and he didn't want to go to jail and get caught in this marriage fraud. Right, so he annulled the marriage. Lorley went to Vegas to try to talk to the courts to see if she could still stay, and they told her she had three days to leave the United States um, because she was no longer legal there because she was no longer married. Um, what she did then is Aldo came to. They waited until Stan and Sean were at the gym. They broke into Sean's fucking house, stole all his cash, okay, his supplements, poured milk and cereal all over his kitchen floor, okay, stole his breathing machine that he had to sleep at night, the mask, stole his newbie machine, which is the, the electromagnified thing that, you know, uh, stimulates the muscles, it cost $18,000, okay? Sean had to call the police on Laura Lee. Remember Laura Lee, the innocent Laura Lee that you guys all look up to? Had to call the fucking police on Laura Lee, okay, to get back his newbie machine, $18,000 newbie machine. And she said, no, the guy gave it to me for my Olympic prep. The guy gave it to Sean Warden for his Olympic prep. And Lorley was um, forced by the police to give it back to him. Okay, I don't know if she actually ever did. 
And I'm just like, Lordy, why do you keep putting yourself in situations? Just stop fucking making your life more difficult. You don't have to break into Sean's house and steal his shit and pour cereal and milk all over the floor. You're 26 years old. Like, why are you trying to cause more problems for yourself? I don't like she just literally put herself in situations all the time and just causes more and more problems for herself endlessly. And it's like it's like a smoker. Like you can tell them to stop and try to um, convince them not to, and you really love them, but they're gonna do it regardless, right? So at a certain point, it's just like, why the fuck do I even try? Um, so, so yeah, that was a fucking crazy. That was crazy. So another part. We're a week out from this. Now we're at the Arnold, right? Um, we're a week out from the Arnold. And Laura Lee um, calls me and wakes me up. And Hannah's in the bed next to me. At 3 o'clock in the morning, wakes me up on a Saturday. One week out. B- crying hysterically. Um, almost worse than when she was crying when she told me that um, Sean, um, you know, allegedly cheated on her. Um, she was crying. I'm like, Laura Lee, calm down, calm down. So she stepped outside. She told me the story. She was at a strip club with Elbow at 3 o'clock in the morning for his birthday. What happened was she put a lime in his friend's mouth and Aldo got fucked, went fucking ape shit, and he called her a whore and a disgusting pig and that he reminds her just of his ex-girlfriend and she's a piece of shit trash and called her a cunt in front of her and just went fucking nuts in front of everyone in the strip club. Okay, so she called hysterically. She's like, I'm leaving. This is this. She's like, I'm done. I promise. So I'm going to show you guys a little video. Um, give me one moment, please. So Laura Lee sent me this video. Um, Alba threw, they went back home and she wanted to take her shit. Alba threw a chair at her and took all of her shit and threw it at the door until they get the fuck out. She's a disgusting whore. Okay. This is the video. This is the chair that, that was thrown at her from Aldo. And at the end, you can hear her say, um, sorry. This is all of her stuff that he threw at the door. You can hear her voice at the end. Great. And she goes, great, right? Like, this is the shit I have to deal with. And I'm trying to find a text message that she sent me. Um, a second, where she goes, I'm done with this. I can't believe you got in my fucking face again. Um, I can't believe. Anyways. No, this is a, I just found text from Z. Look at this. This is a Laura Lee um, with Z. So she goes, I go, um, that you didn't hurt me and, and Z a lot. She goes, Z is fine. Trust me. She sees it through. I know my sister. I'm like, talk to her alone. She's like, oh, I did. She's like, um, just basically iterate, um, iterating that Z is her sister. Um, and that she would never do this to her. And then this is Z messaging me. Her best friend, her childhood best friend. Sorry, I don't, this is shit. She goes, this is Z's message. She goes, I don't even want to have friends anymore. I only have two or three and I'm fine. My heart is in pieces. I'm like, yeah, it's really sad. Um, she goes, I love her so much. I can't believe she broke me like that and left me knowing I was suffering. This is Laurel Lee's best friend, her childhood best friend that she did this to because of Aldo. Um, let me see here. We were at the Michigan show and... Um, this, this this show is a fucking disaster. So firstly, I get there, and I see Laura Lee has this fucking huge bruise on her ass, which is he mentions in the video, right? And you're a professional athlete. Whatever you want to do, that's for, perfectly fine. But you're a bikini athlete, and your back pose, right, is an extremely um, big point of um, of judging, right? And this is it's hard to kind of see this. Maybe you can. It's fuck. It's a huge dark blue purple bruise on her ass, right? And you saw it on the stage there too. And I was there in the background. And um, Laura Lee actually messaged me here. Sorry, this is not really, I'm just gonna read it to you. She goes, done, yo, my bruise is fucked. You think they're gonna make me lose? He called me, I answered it was I was tanning. It was super calm, I called back. Um, and I go, does the bruise show? She goes, yes, a lot. So what happened at that show was um, also that Bruce situation. And then they got it in a fucking huge argument because there was a super nice photographer. This was at the Michigan show. Um, an extremely kind photographer who like drove them from the airport. was just trying to call me Lordy because she came to a kind of a, small, a smaller show. And he told her like, um, this guy's trying to fuck you and this and this. And this guy's like the most like innocent, nice guy. Like he, he, he's like so like 
not that type of guy. But Al Gore does not literally talk to any guy. Um, same thing as ex boyfriend, block them. Nope, this guy's trying to fuck you. Nope, this guy's trying to fuck you. Nope, they're not going anywhere without me. Um, so I got into a huge argument, and that's when I heard him call her a cunt, a bitch, a whore in front of me. It was a full out fucking fight. Um, and then we're two days out, and he makes her sleep on the couch in her hotel room. Two days out from her fucking show, remember this. And then the next morning, he leaves. He just packs and leaves, doesn't tell her, he just fucking goes back to bed. And then we actually had a good day for once. Um, she was talking on her phone with her parents, FaceTiming the whole time, and her Z, and, you know, while well, she was talking to Z, and her brothers, and like, yeah, this, she told him the whole story, and he made me sleep on the couch, and he got fucking crazy again, and she's like, I'm done, guys, don't worry, and her parents were happy, and this and that. Um, you know, we're, and then we go to the show morning, right, we're backstage before PJing. She's on the phone with him, they're having a yelling match for an hour backstage, right, right before PJing. And then she got matched, like, James, I didn't look good this show. Laura Lee, your cortisol is through the roof. One hour before you go on prejudging, she's yelling at him backstage right up until she gets in line to pump, pump up for an hour, guys. This is the type of shit that this guy's doing to her while she's at the shows, right? And this is why um, you guys might have noticed a lot, and it's been on Reddit here and there, that after every show, they, like, block each other. They, 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 they break up every two or three days, but they, after you're pro, they block each other for two weeks. When she goes, he, she, she cannot stand when she's around her parents, right? So she goes to see her parents, she blocks him, uh, he blocks her and doesn't talk to her and then they come back and then everything's fine, right? Because um, he wants full control of her. So um, th that was the Michigan show. Then we go to the um, um, the Arnold, right? So, oh yeah, I didn't, oh yeah, so she goes, three o'clock in the morning um, at the Arnold, right? she calls me, um, he went fucking crazy and then he threw the chair at her, right? And then after, um, I'm like, Laura, she's like, oh, I'm done with him. I'm fucking leaving. She's already threw all the shit out. She's like, I'm taking my shit and leaving. Then eight hours later, I go on Instagram. I wake up. It's like, whatever, in the morning. Um, she posts, my king brings me coffee every morning. I'm so lucky. I said, Laura, why are you waking me and Hannah up at three o'clock in the morning? And um, and then and then posting right after, like, oh, like I'm leaving. He threw a chair. He was calling you a cunt in front of everyone. And then you're going on social media. Oh, my king. Like, what fake bullshit are you doing? And if you're going to do this, don't fucking involve me anymore. I don't want to be part of this anymore. If you're this, like... If, if you're going to continue doing this and keep going back with this fucking idiot, right? Um, so we go to the Arnold and, you know, the fucking argument all the fucking time. Um, and then after, this is where I guess really fucked up. So two weeks later is the Olympia. But by the way, they both keep posting that, um, you know, I didn't prepare for the Arnold Olympia, right? They both keep posting this. So um, I'm going to show you guys this is fucking bullshit. I prepped her for both of these shows. Um, you know, and they, they made t-shirts saying, Laurel Lee coached herself for the Olympia and the Arnold and then wearing it at Expos. And then he made like three different um, blackboards where it's like, sorry, whiteboards where he's like, um, Laurel Lee prepped herself for the Olympia and the Arnold and they, this, this, right? Look at this, okay? This is one we got from Olympia. This is from the Olympia. Sorry. Check in. Check in. Sorry, guys. I know this is not ideal, but. Anyways, it goes on and on and on. Let me show it. Let me keep going. Monday, October 4th, six days out. Look at the date. Look at the date. Right? This, is, this is the Olympia where she, where she apparently coached herself, right? Let's keep going. Look, more check-ins. I have like 100. Oh, this is Tuesday, October 5th. Oh, I'm coming to see you soon and love you, right? Keep going. There's just, it just a whole bunch of fucking check-ins. I'm going to show you the last one we, last check-in we did. Um, oh, by the way, this is Z. This is Z where she was at Olympia with. I took this picture. This is her best friend Z, if you didn't know who it was. Who she, she stopped talking to. Um, you know, this is at the Olympia in the hotel room where we do check-ins together, where I, where I didn't prep her apparently, right, for this Olympia. This is us backstage at the Olympia together. There's another one I want to show you our last, if I can try to find it. Yeah. This is Thursday, two days out, guys, where she where she coached herself, right, from the Olympia. Two days out. Look at the date. October 7th. Okay? So the whole bullshit of them, her coaching herself is a fucking lie, guys. And they it's funny because the whole video is the truth, right? We're gonna we're gonna release the truth. We're gonna tell the truth. It's all bullshit. Their whole story is fucking bullshit. Um Let's continue here. One second, please. So, <laughs> we were a week out from Olympia, and she calls me, right, on the on the Friday. We're eight days out. 
And she goes, James, um, I want you to give me $50,000, okay, USD, or I'm not giving you credit for this Olympia. So she sends me this email, okay? Look, she wants $43,500. She sends me this email and it goes like random stupid fucking numbers. She goes, considering this aspect, 500 recurring paying clients at $4,000 prep each per year is $2 million. Half of the clients from my referral equals 250 equals 1 million. 5% finder's fee equals $50,000. Like, what the fuck? Like, just ra- I was literally, I, I'm like, what the fuck is these random numbers you came out of your ass? Obviously, Aldo told her to write this stupid fucking situation. Um, it was the dumbest email I ever re- got in my life. And I, I called her back and I was like, Lorley, um, this is, I was so, I've never been mad. It's very hard to get me mad. But Lorley really got me fucking pissed off because I was just like, Lorley, you're trying to extort me. Um, you know, for this fucking Olympia, I've been coaching for two and a half years, right? And you want to do this to me a week out? You want to tell me, give you $42,500 or you're not going to give me credit for this Olympia? That's what she told me. And then she's like, yeah, this is, this is the situation. She's like, I'm just going to finish crap my own. I was like, fuck. I was like, I'm not fucking giving you this money. Like, I've already spent $50,000 on you. Um, all your expenses, all this bullshit. And you want $50,000 more? Like, this, the, guys, this is the shit that you don't hear. And this, how, how come, how, I'm wondering why uh, why the um, the video that they posted, the, the truth story that they, um, they haven't included this part in it either. Um, so Shari Shore me, her coach of two and a half years and her best friend, right? Um, Fifty thousand dollars. And then after, I call, she calls me back like two hours later. She's like, James, I'm so sorry. I love you. You know, I would never do this to you. And this and that. She's like, and I had her on speaker on the car with Hannah, and she goes, just buy me a trip to Hawaii or something instead. And I look at Hannah. Hannah looks at me. She's like, what the fuck? We're both like, what the fuck is she talking about? How do you go from asking me for forty thousand five hundred dollars? To saying, oh, never mind, just buy me a trip to Hawaii. It's like, when am I? I'm your fucking coach. Why are you asking me to do these things for you? I don't, first of all, I already spent $50,000 on shit that you should be paying me back for. And now you tell me you want to extort me for $42,500. And you say, never mind, buy me a trip to Hawaii. Like, I I, I don't, like, the, the mind is not, like, doesn't make fucking sense. And I'm not able to compute at this point. So I'm like, whatever. Then she sends me a check in immediately, right? So then we do the Olympia. And then um, she... I, I check with her all the way up until Thursday. She ignores me. For, the last check-in was Thursday night, two, two days before. And I told her what to eat on Friday, I told her what to eat on Saturday, whatever. Um, and then I said, well, just from there. We, when you're two days out, you've been working with an athlete for two and a half years. You know, you kind of both know what to do at that point. So um, she ignores me Friday, ignores me Saturday. And I see her backstage at the, she's like, I'm so sorry. You know, it's because of Aldo and I love you. And that's when we took that picture together that I showed you with her best friend, Z. Um, and then after the Olympia, we go home and she called me. She's like, James, um, I posted in my in my Instagram. Um, I posted um, second place Miss Bikini Olympia 2020 and 2021, right? And she goes, take that off right now. I coach myself. I said, Lordy, what the fuck? She's like, how could you? You have no integrity. How could you be posting? That? I said, Lordy, how the fuck are you even? How are these words coming out of your mouth, right? I'm just like, I coach you for two and a half years, like for this Olympia, and you you didn't check in with me for one day, the Friday before and the Saturday, and then you're telling me you coach yourself. This is bullshit. And so then. She blocks me, right? Because I said, I'm not removing it. And she posts, for me, by me, coach myself. I kept posting to coach yourself. And then took team Alice and fell out of her bio, right? Um, so then after I, um, um, I I call her and I, I go, Orly, like, um, I don't want to file a lawsuit against you, but um, I, I have no choice. I'm like, you're extorting me for $50,000, right? For Olympia. You owe me $50,000 of expenses. And then you're doing all this damage to me. Like, obviously, as a coach, our... Our most profitable month is like after Olympia, right? After you get a great placing because everyone wants to join your team after. That's how it works. And I'm like, you're fucking me for all of this, all these potential new clients where I worked fucking hand and foot for years to get to this position, talking to the judges, making sure her shape is good and doing all this fucking shit for her. And then she does this to me, right? So I said, I'm going to send, she's like, okay, send me a letter from your lawyer, whatever. So I send her a letter within like two hours and it says it's the most reasonable and makeable way to resolve the situation, right? Because I don't want to sue Laura Lee. I don't want to fucking do that. And it says, post on your story that James coach you for this Olympia, okay? And that you're both um, going your own way and that you're respectfully just you know, doing your own thing. If you don't post this, we're going to sue you for $250,000. All I had to post on our story was that I coached for Olympia, which was the truth, and that we were going to go our own way. 
And that was the end of it. That would have been the end of the fucking whole situation. What did she do? She ignores, she ignores the letter. We had 43, we gave her 48 hours. She ignored it. And then blocked me on social media. Everywhere blocked me everywhere. So what do I have to do? I have to file a lawsuit against her. I have no choice. She's ruining my business, telling everyone she coached herself, right? He's fucking on Instagram trying to slander me every day, um, saying all this bullshit, saying she coached herself. James does this. James trying to bribe her. I didn't try to bribe her for anything. She tried to fucking throw me for $50,000, right? So then after, I filed a lawsuit against her. Um, and it's for $250,000. So then she gets in a panic mode, right? So what does she do? She tries to file a restraining order against me, okay, um, for stalking. And, you know, then she makes that video. Uh, you guys probably remember she made that video. Oh, I'm, I'm in a, such a bad situation. And James, um, you know, or not, she didn't say my name, but she said, oh, my best friend's suing me. And I'm just so troubled because of Sean passing. It's just like a fucking long bullshit video um, saying how she's like the victim, right? And then they start posting. Aldo started posting and tagging her. Oh, you know, um, getting a restraining order, going to protect my girl, this and this, right? I had to get a lawyer in Florida. And I had to fly to Florida to go to court against Lordy. Me and Lordy have already been in court. Okay, the judge denied her restraining order. So then I had to file an amendment to the lawsuit, suing her for another fifty thousand dollars for expenses and all this bullshit she put me through. She said that I stalked her. This is for instance, in Florida to get a restraining order, you need two instances of stalking, right? So the first instance of stalking was the Olympia. Okay, she's saying, "Hey, I love you. I'm coming to your room." Did check-ins all the way up, up into Olympia, and then we're backstage taking pictures together. That's her first instance of stalking. Her second instance of stalking was a show she did two weeks later or three weeks later, wherever I think it was in Sacramento, one of these shows, and she said that I was stalking her backstage. I didn't leave her alone. So my lawyer is asking her, right? Did James have any other athletes at the show? Yes, he had two. Did, did James talk to you? No. Well, then why is this talking? Well, he was backstage and I felt intimidated. So she, her two instances was I talked to her at Olympia and then I was backstage with her at a show where I had two other pros at. I didn't talk to her one time, ever. So the judge stamped the paper, denied the, denied the restraining order, obviously. She tried to ruin my career and my life by not, imagine I couldn't come to the Arnold, couldn't come to Pittsburgh Pro, couldn't come to New York Pro, couldn't come to Olympia because Lordy was at the shows. She tried to ruin me, right? And then after they fucking make this video, oh, I'm, you know, I'm so innocent and James is a monster. She's fucking doing all these things. I didn't want it to get to the situation at all. Meanwhile, he's slandering me nonstop. I had to follow lawsuit against him, right? Because he's, you guys, you guys, if you've been following this fucking idiot for um, a while, you see that he's been, even now, we're almost a year later, he's making this fucking, I haven't posted nothing in a year or a year later he's still making this fucking video of like the truth comes out what this is what the fuck are you talking about like he's um one of his <laughs> one of his ex-employees chris where i'll do mentions in this thing actually messaged my client which i have a text message from maybe i can find it and he says aldo is so obsessed with me he had to leave that um that gym where he's working at because aldo couldn't stop talking about me he would get up four o'clock in the morning sit in his office and look at my instagram all day long and, just, and look at james look at james and all you can talk about is me and this is why he's so fucking obsessed and this is why he he can't sleep at night because all of this is thinking about me. And it's, I'm so beyond this. I'm like, I just wanted to get this resolved in court and just not make this public. I never wanted to make this fucking video, but he has to make this fucking post. And Lord, he has to repost like an idiot saying the truth comes out. This, they're both not very smart. And, you know, this is the truth. And um, that's a lot of the receipts of the shit that he's done toward. Let me actually find one more um, where um, she says. It sucks. I'm in Mexico and I have to make this fucking video because of these idiots. Um, one moment, please. I don't think I don't think I could. Anyway, she, this, is the, the, this is the text message where she says, um, "I can't believe you got in my face." Um, this is the one where he threw her chair at her and. Um, and all their clothes up at the, the window. Um, anyways, Aldo has been, this gives more to it, but Aldo's been like extorting Laura Lee for the past um, year, right? No one knew about Aldo before Laura Lee. And how many times have you seen um, Aldo post or Laura Lee post her ass or do sexual shit on social media before Aldo? Never one time. This is not in Laura Lee's DNA. Aldo uses her and like makes her look like a prostitute on social media just to try to get more attention. Look at this. This is Laura Lee's ass, right? And the question goes, what's the difference from your other relationships and Laura Lee? Post as her ass. Post this video of her ass on social media. This is on a story, right? I'm university on a story. This too. 
How many times have you guys seen Laura Lee ever post shit like that before um, Before she was with Aldo? Her naked ass on social media. Describe Laura Lee in one word. Impossible. Fuck, it's not zooming in. Sorry. There. Just describe Laura Lee in one word. Impossible. Laura Lee and Aldo hate each other, but they, they, they need to stay together because Aldo keeps telling her, if you leave me, I'm going to get you... Um, um, Deported from Canada, right? Because she needs to be legally in a marriage or else she has to leave Canada. So she's, it sucks that she is in a situation where she has to be with him. And then, um, honestly, I don't even know if she would leave him if, if you know, she didn't even have to because she's, she, um, you know, she likes this stuff. But so he, I've, he's told me in front of me, like, I'm going to get you deported then, whatever. So he abused her and he uses her for, for his business and fucking hates her. So he, he gains monetary value for her and she's just fucking stuck in this relationship because of this asshole. And he says he's going to get her deported. So this is another situation. Um, when Sean passed away, um, Laura Lee um, posted that, um, you know, I'm so sad and I, Sean and, you know, I, my number 12 for Sean and I love him and shit like that too, right? She never mentioned about the, the receipt she sent about Cora and the, um, the refund she got to get. One sec, let me try to find this. Sorry, guys. I know it's unorganized, but this is a video that I didn't want to make and didn't plan to make. And um, yeah, so here's another thing. So Laura Lee was bragging and telling everyone after Sean died, five days after that, she got married to Aldo. Okay, this is after, right after Sean died. Um, and Aldo, one moment, sorry guys. There's one thing I need to show you that's very important I'm trying to find here. Here we go. Aldo is fucking insane. So what he does is he says, ask me questions, ask me anything, and then he asks himself questions on his own story, right? And this is one, look at this one. I don't know if you guys can't see it, right? Anyways, you can kind of see it says, are you married? Are you and Laura Lee married? Look at the font, look at the font. It's different font than than the um, than what you get with the Q and A's. So he literally took a, picture of this screenshot, uh, took a picture of this and wrote, are you married to Laura Lee? And put this emoji on it himself. And look at the spacing. The spacing is smaller there than it is there. So he ruined, he literally fucking got caught on Reddit and they posted, is it just me or did Aldo University type the question and put it over the question sticker to make it look like someone asked it? This is what, this is the type of shit this fucking narcissist does. He's insane. So he took a picture, he took a picture of a blank, ask me question and typed on it, are you married to Laura Lee? And did a wink face. He does this all the time, but now he makes fake count and asks himself questions for his own story to try to fucking start shit with me all the time. And once again, I haven't posted nothing. This is an old video of Aldo um, and how he treats his clients. Obviously he, he, um, he deleted this, but second, please. This is, look at this. Let's play it again for you guys. So he licks his hand, right? And slaps his client ass before she squats. Look at this. This is the type of guy that Laura Lee's dating, by the way. Play through one more time. Licks his hand and smacks her ass. This is the type of guy that Laura Lee, uh, that, that Aldo is, and this is how he, um, this is this is how he he deal, deals with fucking women. So, anyways, let's continue on with the story. Um, so she marries Aldo, um, and then after um, she makes the whole story. Oh, I love Sean. This this all fucking bullshit. She did this. This shows for me. This or this shows for Sean. This wins for Sean. Then after goes ahead and fucking gets married to. Uh, to Aldo right after Sean passes away. Um, you guys might notice Laura Lee Wright was with Yamamoto. Well, what happened with that, right? I mean, she was with HD Muscle and then switched to Yamamoto and then it's randomly now she's with a new company. She signed a contract with Yamamoto um, that she was able to travel to, to Europe and um, that she was going to be posting, you know, a certain amount per week, etc. So little did they find out that she's not able to leave the United States, right? Because she's there on a marriage and or whatever she or she was ever legally whatever and she can't leave the united states so she fucked up their contract there so they're like well we're a european country you can't even come overseas to you know do the seminars and you know uh, market our market our brand and then she wasn't posting anything too and then the the manager there was like girlie you need to follow the contract you're not posting you're not posting and she's like oh i can i'm working on visa stuff i'm trying to i don't have time the, the, the lady's like you're fucking posting this shit all you're posting shit all the time on social media. You can't post one time like every couple of days about Yamamoto. We're paying you sixty five hundred dollars a month. Like literally, this is the thing where where the, where the entitlement comes in, where she needs to be 
paid and do nothing all the time. Um, so then after um, I'm in Toronto Pro, and I'm not going to say who, but someone at Yamamoto who recruited Laura Lee, and who works there, was like, James, I'm so happy you're suing Laura Lee. Um, Laura Lee is the worst, not the worst athlete, the worst person I've ever dealt with in my entire life. And she's been doing this for, you know, over 10 years. And she's like, this is the girl's the worst. It's all fake on social media. I'm like, <laughs> I know. I'm like, it sucks because it's like you, you see one thing and then it's totally fake um, on the inside. So I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I missed, but I think that's that's um, that's the most of it. But um, yeah, it's just this is a fucking sad situation and I never wanted it to come to this point. Um, I would have it would have been done, you know, right after Olympia. She just had posted a story and stuff, too, but. They've been harassing me, talking to my clients, telling my clients to come to their gym. Um, you know, he just posted that one of my ex-clients from Japan went to his gym and she talked all this stuff about me. Like they're nonstop. He's posting a story every two weeks, making chalkboards, James is toxic, Lord, uh, Lord's ex-coach is terrible, Lordly coach self, and then now he makes this 10 minute truth video. So guys, that is the truth on what happened with me and Lordly and Aldo. Um, it fucking sucks. Um, but I mean, I, I had to make this video to kind of clear clear the air and tell you guys the real truth. So I hope you have a good night. It's 12 o'clock at night and I'm supposed to be having a vacation, but this is the shit I have to deal with um, because of this fucking idiot. But it is what it is. So hope you guys have a good night. Thank you for watching.